you know, some guys love it, some guys hate it, but I'm pretty sure it's looking like it's gonna be the new standard of catching. What's going on guys? Coach Matt and you go pro baseball.com. I'm here with the man Kyle Schmidt. He came from Leander, Texas. You might remember the video we did at the 180 Performance Center. Great video. I'll leave it down below if you want to check it out. In this video, we're talking about some must-do movement exercises, mobility, stuff that he does as a professional catcher. He's still a professional catcher in the Twins organization and he trains guys during the offseason. This is what he does with his guys during the offseason. He's got a great Instagram page at KGS Baseball. Go give him a follow right now and check the website, kgsbaseball.com. Really great stuff there. Again, in this video, we're talking about the mobility stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So like when we talk about catching, right? You think you're behind the dish for in pro ball three, four hours at a time. If you have an 11 or 12 inning game, it could be longer than that. And so if we're not able to move and we're not able to continue to do the things that we want to do behind the dish, it's gonna cause some problems. And that's where you may start feeling pain, tightness, you may not even be able to move like you want to. And so for us, every single day that we work, we're gonna go through some sort of mobility exercise, whether it's in the weight room before we get started, whether it's on the field before we get going with the game, something to make sure that our hips, our knees, our ankles, our back are ready to go and we're able to move for that long period of time as we play. One of the toughest positions on the field, I would argue every pitcher wants to be a catcher. Yeah, <laughs> until like we were talking about, until they get back there and they see this and this and this and they go, oh, that's kind of tough to catch. <laughs> that's true, that is true. So what do you got? Show All us right, some. cool. So first one that I like to do, and this is something that I do with my clients, this is something that I do myself and you know, all of us in the Twins organization, a bunch of other catchers out there that I've seen roll through these. So really simple to start. All we're gonna do is be on a knee and we're basically gonna do a kneeling stretch just like this, but there's a couple key things that we wanna focus on here so that we're not losing some of the movement that we would actually want to get out of this and some of the stretching in the hips. So we're gonna lean forward into our knee. I like to push into it here, but whenever we do this, I wanna make sure I keep my core tucked and I keep my back relatively flat because if we start to arch that back, we don't get as much out of it as we would really like to see. Okay, so all we're gonna do here is just lean into that, hold it, you should feel it pretty deep in the hip and that joint. And then from there, you can kick it out to the side and do the same thing. So just trying to get that hip nice and loose, nice and activated, a really low intensity stretch to get going. Something to keep in mind here is that this foot should probably stay flat on the ground. If we start getting up on our toe or up on our heel like this, we're not gonna get the same effect. So from there, we're just bouncing back and forth, feel that good stretch, try to keep that core tucked and that back flat, and then rolling back out to the side. And then from there, you can go ahead and switch it up as many reps as you wanna do. And make sure you get that good stretch on both sides. And then from there, what I like to do is I'll go down to my butt and we do what we call 90-90 hip switches. So whenever we're doing this, we make sure that our knees are 90 degrees here on both sides and we're gonna keep that angle as we roll through this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up the knee that is to our inside and we're just gonna move that all the way across while we bring this knee with us. And then we're gonna switch it back down and feel that good stretch. Ideally, you want your hands to be out in front of you here where you're not having to brace on the ground because it's gonna get a little bit more activation, a little bit more movement for you, but it's okay if you do have to lean back like this while we're rolling through this. Something that I think is important to note too is that we don't wanna just blow through this and go here. We really want to try to control that move as we get through that exercise. A little addition, I know we had talked Brandon Janeka at True Grind Systems in Austin, and something that he likes to add to this and something that I've started adding to it as well is pinning down the outside knee and then lifting up that foot off the ground. And whenever you do this, you're gonna feel that in that hip. Hold this for two or three seconds, roll back through, pin that other knee down, and then lift that up. So I think that's a really good activation drill, a really good stretch, get that rotation in the hips and make sure that everything is loose and good to go as we get ready to work. From there, I like to take my handy dandy band here. Nothing special. I'm gonna go ahead and slip this above my knees. And first, I'm just gonna get into a deep squat and just try to feel that resistance and keep that band tight. And just get a little bit of a movement going here, a little side to side. And then from there, we can actually get that butt up a little bit, get set to go. We can move to the right move to the left 
and just get that good stretch. And so we're feeling that tension and that resistance and then also getting that activation while we're there. So another one that I think is really good for us, and this is something that I started doing my sophomore year of college during summer ball. So I started to feel that my body was getting a little tired. I wasn't feeling the same way. And so I was actively searching for some sort of routine that I could do before every game to make sure that my legs were loose, my hips were loose, my back was loose, ready to go before I played. So I found this one and I still use it to this day and I still really like it. All you can see, I'm using a band right here. Really simple, like at most gyms, you're gonna have one. A lot of places are gonna have these. And all we're gonna do is put that around the middle of our foot, keep both our legs straight. We're gonna lay down and we're just gonna lift that leg up as high as we can go without this other leg coming up off the ground. So from there, you're controlling that move and we're just going up and down here. We call this leg lowering. Really simple, but I think it's a good exercise. You'll feel that in the hamstring, behind the knee, some in the calf too. And then from there, if you want, go ahead and go out to the side and back down, back out to the side. I think something that is important to note here is that whenever we're doing this, there's not like a set range of motion that we're going for either. It's within your range of motion and within what you can do to be able to get your body ready to go. Whenever I think about mobility in general, I think that mobility is more than just flexibility. So we talk about flexibility, like if I can get down in a split, I'm pretty flexible, right? But I don't think that I can move around like a catcher should from that position because I don't have the mobility that I need to have in that position. Not that I can do a split by any means, but mobility is more of the opportunity to be able to move while we're behind the dish. And especially as we're talking about receiving, blocking, throwing, whatever we would do behind the dish, if we have that extra mobility, we have the capability to move, we're gonna be in a pretty good spot. So another one that we've got is just kneeling T-spine. So when we think about catching, before we get rolling into this, whether you're on two feet, whether you're on one knee, whatever position you're in, you can see how my back is pretty constricted the whole time that I'm behind the dish. Whenever I'm down in a receiving position, whether I'm on two feet, on one knee, we're not really opening up that back and keeping that same range of motion and that same mobility in our T-spine, which is the middle of our back. So for me, I like to go on all fours. I'll put one hand up on the top of my head. I'm gonna reach as far as I can without giving up the position on this elbow here. Stretch it, and then I'm gonna come back up and open that back up as high as I can go, and then come back down. I'll hit both sides, I'll do those for reps. Another variation of this that you can do is on that same kneeling position, with our toes dug in behind us. We're just gonna walk our hands back and push our butt back towards our heels. We're gonna turn one thumb up and we're gonna reach back as far as we can go and then come back down. So you'll notice right there what I did is I followed my hands with my eyes as I was working back here. And that way I keep my neck and my spine in a good position whenever I do get to working. From there, same thing, go ahead and alternate it and come up. Just getting everything nice and loose. You should feel this in the hips and some of the legs as well while we work. After that, one little exercise that I like to do is just focused on the ankles. So as a catcher, a lot goes in to the stability of our ankles whenever we are actually working and moving behind the dish. For me, you can do this while you're propped up on a roller. You can do it if you have a platform to prop your leg up on, or we can just put it up on our foot like this. I like to use this band and just make little circles with my ankle. Now notice that I'm controlling these circles. I'm not just going out of control, but nice smooth circles at the ankle. And then coming back the other way. And I'll do that both sides. There's plenty to be gained by doing these mobility exercises. And there's also so many more exercises that you can do to make sure that you're ready to go. But like I said, I like to focus on the ankles, the hips, the T-spine, and then everything else together to make sure that my body's good to go whenever I get behind the dish for a game. Obviously really important to have good mobility as a catcher, it makes sense, great hip mobility, ankle mobility, yeah. it's a huge one, back mobility, T-spine mobility. And I really wanna pick your brain okay. about this whole OKD, LKD, <laughs> RKD, KD. LKD and RKD. So. And I don't wanna get too in depth on this video, but that uh, the mobility has a, a big role in that, Absolutely, right? absolutely. So when we talk about, and you're referencing right knee down and left knee down setups, and that's what you're seeing more and more in baseball today, whether it's the 10 you guys we were talking about, the Chiefs all use that setup, or guys that are in the big leagues that are using that setup to be able to get more calls and receive the ball in a little bit different way. So that mobility definitely comes into play. If you can't get down in that position because you're limited in your range of motion, it's not gonna work for you whenever you talk about like, oh, I wanna get back there and get in a modified kickstand with my right knee down, my left leg out, and I want to still be able to block and get up and throw. 
So if we don't have that mobility, it's really tough. And this is a hugely debated topic, I feel like, nowadays, especially mm -hmm. as it's trickling down from pro baseball into amateur baseball, youth baseball. You know, some guys love it, some guys hate it, but I'm pretty sure it's looking like it's gonna be the new standard of catching. I, I think so, and you know, I use me as an example. I went, I started catching when I was five years old, and then I got drafted when I was 22 years old, 21 years old. And so for 16 years there, I was catching on two feet, just because that's what I was taught, and that's what I did my whole life. And then whenever I got drafted, got exposed to what we were doing in the Twins organization, I loved it. I was like, I think this is awesome. I feel like I'm producing a lot more value for my team, my staff, and then for myself behind the plate and being able to maybe get an extra few calls, be able to be a little bit more comfortable behind the dish while still be able to do everything that I want to do back there as far as blocking the ball, throwing the ball. So we're going to dive deep into this whole topic in the next video. We're going to talk about the one knee down, left knee down, right knee down, how you're supposed to do the whole knee down technique, why you're doing it, where it came from, all that good stuff in the next video. Thank you so much for the information. Guys, go check them out at KGS Baseball sure. on Instagram, kgsbaseball.com. All the information is down below. If you got any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section. Be sure to subscribe to You Go Pro Baseball with the bell turned on, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.